Now coming to Bain Bridge reflex. Here, this is elicited by the stretch receptor, which is located in the right atrial wall as well as at the cavo atrial junction. An increase in right sided filling pressure sends a vagal efferent signal to the cardiovascular center in the medulla, and this efferent signal inhibits the parasympathetic activity. Once your parasympathetic activity is inhibited, your heart rate is going to go up that is the reflex acceleration of the heart rate can also result from a direct effect on SA node by the stretching atrium as the atrium stretch the SA node also gets activated and the heart rate goes up change in heart rate or depend upon the underlying heart rate even before stimulation here you can see as the atrium gets stretched your right atrium or some volume overload the atrium gets stretched here you can see the atrium getting stretched the afferent signal goes to the medulla and from the medulla there is parasympathetic inhibition. There is parasympathetic inhibition which goes back and it increases the rate. So that as the rate increases the volume gets flushed out that is very important and sometimes there can be sympathetic stimulant also which can increase the rate and contract rate to send the volume out that is the brain bridge reflect. Now coming to basal joris reflex. Here there is a noxious ventricular stimuli sensed by chemoreceptor and mechanoreceptor which is located within the left ventricular wall. Pain bridge was in atrium. Here it is in the left ventricular wall. This reflex leads to triad of hypotension, bradycardia and coronary artery vasodilatation. The activated receptors communicate along unmyelinated C fibers. This fibers reflexly increases the parasympathetic tone and as it increases the parasympathetic tone, there is going to be bradycardia and everybody thinks that it is a cardioprotective reflex. This reflex has been implicated in physiological response to myocardial ischemia, infarction, thrombolysis, revascularization or even syncope. Natriuretic peptide receptor simulated by endogenous ANP and BNP may modulate the reflex and thus may be less pronounced in patient with cardiac hypertrophy or atrial fibrillation. Here you can see a underfill ventricle or suddenly some MI or something happens. This receptor in the left ventricle gets activated. There is underfilled ventricle and an event happens. This contraction gets the mechanoreceptors or the chemoreceptor located in the left ventricle sends the signal to the medulla. From there you have a parasympathetic activation. You have the parasympathetic activation which leads to bradycardia. That is the first component of vessel joris reflex. We thought we, you think it will be a protective reflex but what happens next is the sympathetic inhibition which leads to vasodilatation as well as decreased contractility which leads to hypotension. So there is a triad of hypotension, bradycardia and vasodilatation that is vessel joris reflex.